Hello and welcome to this tutorial on implementing Redis distributed locks with Spring Boot. I'm Luis and today we're going to explore a crucial concept in distributed systems. Imagine you have multiple instances of your application running and they all need to access a shared resource. How do you ensure they don't interfere with each other? That's where distributed locks come in. A distributed lock is a synchronization mechanism that allows multiple processes or servers to coordinate access to shared resources in a distributed system. And Redis, with its speed and atomic operations, is an excellent tool for implementing these locks. By the end of this tutorial, you'll understand how to implement and use Redis distributed locks in your Spring Boot applications, helping you build more robust and scalable systems. Before we dive in, let's make sure we have everything set up. One. You'll need a Spring Boot project. If you don't have one, head to start.spring.io and create a new project. 2. Add the following dependencies to your palm.xml. 3. In your application.properties, add your Redis connection details. If your Redis has password, make sure to include it too. Make sure you have Redis installed and running on your machine. You can create an instance with Docker or just use the binary. Here, I run Redis directly from the binary. Now that we're set up, let's understand the key concepts. At its core, a Redis distributed lock uses three main components. One, a lock key, a unique identifier for the lock. Two, a lock value, a unique value to identify the lock owner. Three, a timeout to prevent indefinite locks if a process crashes. The basic flow is, one, try to acquire the lock. Two, if successful, perform the critical operation. Three, release the lock, this is optional. Redis atomic operations make it ideal for this. We'll use set nx, set if not exists, to acquire the lock and a Lua script to release it safely. Let's look at how we implement this in Spring Boot. This is our Redis distributed lock class. Let's break it down. We're using String Redis template, which Spring Boot auto configures for us. Now, let's look at the acquire lock method. This method uses set if absent, which is Redis set nx command. It sets the key only if it doesn't exist, effectively acquiring the lock. Next, the release lock method, we use a Lua script to ensure we only release the lock if we own it. This prevents accidental releases of someone else's lock. However, in most cases, especially when you only need to prevent duplicate execution, releasing the lock is not needed because it will eventually expire. Finally, the execute locked method. This method encapsulates the lock execute release pattern, making it easier to use in our services. However, their release lock method is not always needed in the case of preventing duplicate execution. So I include another method called execute scheduled task with lock. Now, let's see how to use this in a service. Here, we're using the execute locked or execute scheduled task with lock, which doesn't explicitly release the lock method to perform our critical operation. The lock key is specific to this operation. The lock value is a unique UUID, and we set a timeout of 10 seconds. Now, Let's configure an example schedule tasks that runs every 15 seconds. We need to make sure that even when there are multiple instances, the task run only once. First, you need to enable scheduling for the Spring Boot application. Then, let's configure the cron job like so. Let's start two instances of this application and observe the lock.
As you can see, the task is triggered every 15 seconds and the two instances are competing for the lock but there is only one winner. While our implementation works well for many scenarios, there are some advanced topics to consider. 1. Lock renewal. For long-running operations, you might need to renew the lock periodically. 2. Redlock algorithm. For higher reliability, consider using the Redlock algorithm across multiple Redis instances. 3. Handling network partitions. Be prepared for network issues and have a strategy to handle them. There are some best practices to keep in mind. 1. Keep locked sections as short as possible. 2. Always use a timeout to prevent indefinite locks. 3. Use unique lock values, like UUIDs, to prevent accidental release of someone else's lock. 4. Be prepared for lock acquisition failures and have a retry strategy. Common pitfalls to avoid. 1. Forgetting to release the lock or not setting a timeout for the lock key. 2. Using overly long timeouts. 3. Not handling exceptions properly within the lock section. That wraps up our tutorial on Redis distributed locks with Spring Boot. We've covered the basics of implementation, usage, and some advanced considerations. Remember, distributed locks are powerful but should be used judiciously. They add complexity to your system, so make sure you really need them before implementing. I encourage you to experiment with this code, try different scenarios, and see how it behaves in your specific use cases. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below. Thank you for watching, and happy coding!